Ah. What's up guys, Adam Rose here. So let's talk about pull-ups. I got a lot of questions uh, concerning my last video uh, about how you can modify them and uh, techniques you could do and what, what areas you have to hit, what rep ranges you have to hit to uh, get that optimum uh, amount of stress on the body to actually grow your back and what you know what do pull-ups hit, what, what do those variations that I was doing hit actually on, on the back and uh, what are the benefits, plain and simple. So I wanna do this whole video uh, discussing about pull-ups. Uh, I want to get into the optimum rep ranges, I want to get into the modifications you could do, uh, the different types of variations, the essentials, the fundamentals, the beginners, the beginner workout, uh, the full workout you could do for yourself and others, and the assisting and all that kind of stuff. So let's get into it real quick. Uh, first thing, uh, let's, let's talk about how you could modify uh, what I was doing and what type of stress levels does... Uh, does clapping pull-ups and what are the benefits basically? What are the benefits that clapping pull-ups give you uh, switch grips in mid-air and how you could work your way up to that? It's the, the progression movement of pull-ups essentially. So, uh, okay, first thing is first, uh, clapping pull-ups. Why I do clapping pull-ups? The reason why I do clapping pull-ups is just a different type of stress level that you put on your body. Uh, when you're, you go up with such force that you're above in mid-air the, of the bar that you're pulling up from and your, your body gets a two second rest, or, I'm sorry, a half a second rest and all of a sudden it's shocked by you swinging down and colliding with that bar once again with your grip, with your uh, forearms and everything like that. So it's just a different type of um, stress level on your body, on your back for growth. Do you have to do clapping pull-ups when I listen to my workouts and when I perform it? Absolutely not, especially for you beginners. So I'm going to go down uh, and how if you're an intermediate and beginner and how you could uh, enhance your levels and how you can modify that technique for yourself. Sorry I'm talking fast, I'm just trying to get all this information out. Okay, so um, clapping pull-ups. I uh, When I do clapping pull-ups, I do wide pull-ups, just wide regular body weight pull-ups. If you are not able to do, uh, let's say, 15 to 25 reps of your own body weight uh, with, with, with actual, with ease, uh, going up with a wide grip, uh, you should not be doing clapping pull-ups. First of all, I don't think you have enough strength and it's just not fair to your body. It, your body's just not ready for it. In some cases, that's good. We, know, we all know that your body's not ready for certain workouts that you hit it hard with. But um, clapping is not for beginners or intermediates, uh, in my opinion. Uh, the way I worked up in my own experience to getting to clapping pull-ups is first thing is first body weight. You must be able to do 15 to 25 reps of your own body weight easily. Uh, wide, overhand, underhand, the whole deal. Um, after you could do 15 to 25 reps easily uh, without breaking a sweat basically, uh, get a dip belt, a weighted belt. Um, I have the uh, Harbinger, I did a review on it in my older videos if you want to check it out. It's under that video of uh, actually teaching you guys how to do a clap pull up so if you want to check it out over there. Um, so uh, I get a dip belt. It's basically, uh, essentially, it's just a weighted belt that goes around your uh, your waist with a chain hanging off of it. You could connect kettlebell, uh, kettlebells, uh, dumbbells, uh, plates, whatever you want to do, whatever your poison is, and um, and you basically you're just performing your reps. And I, I would suggest uh, slapping on a five pounder, then ten, then ten, then fifteen, then twenty five. But before I get into all that, what is the optimum? I want to answer this question. What is the optimum rep range? that you should be completing for your back exercises, including your pull-ups, to get that uh, range of growth and strength. In my experience, after I started hitting 15 to 25 reps in my pull-ups, um, and I got that weighted belt, and I started hitting the ranges of eight to 12, I found out that that's the most optimum uh, result for me and, uh, and just the progression of it, it, it just satisfied me the best because I hate going into a workout where I know I'm going to have to be doing 15 to 25 reps, those high reps are really a bitch for me. So once I got that weighted belt and I started hitting that 8 to 10, I got more growth on my back and um, in, in higher strength of course, obviously you're putting more weight on your body every single time, especially me that I log in my information as you guys know and I always try to beat it and uh, enhance my level of uh, completing that workout and it's really worked out for me, especially that mindset. That was probably the greatest um, benefit of it all. Um, knowing that I should only be staying with that 8 to 10 and that my goal is a measly 8 to 10 over a, a, long, a, a longer and more, you know, a more miserable 12 to 15, 15 to 25 rep range. So I just, it's just my preference. I like that 8 to 10 rep. Um, 
So that's what really worked out for me with the, with the weighted belt. It's just that mindset, uh, the workout is going to be much quicker, 8 to 10 instead of 15 to 25, which 15 and 25 basically run me about maybe an hour and a half workout, whereas 8 to 10 is maybe like 45 minutes to an hour. I'm going to get into all that a little bit later. But uh, back to what I was saying, uh, so what can you do to modify uh, clapping pull-ups uh, for yourself to try to modify it and work your way up as a progression? Uh, first thing is first, like I said, body weight is really key. Uh, the essentials, the, the fundamentals of pull-ups is wide grip, uh, overhand, underhand, overhand, underhand, and um, switch grips. I'm going to get into switch grips in a second. Um, so wide grip, uh, for you intermediate people, try to do 15 to 25 reps body weight. And once you could do that, slap on 25, uh, 25 30 pound uh, plates or dumbbells, kettlebells, whatever you want to do. And that should work out for you as you progress. Uh, clapping pull-ups is really difficult. Um, it's, t it's a lot of practice. Uh, I was never a master at it. I, f I still feel I have a lot of work to do with it. And um, just take care of yourself, you know. It's not really worth you, you know, going to the gym and making an ass out of yourself, you know, jumping up and then freaking slamming your chin or your head and bashing it against the, the, the pull-up bar. Or your hands are sweaty. That happens to me lots of times. And you can't necessarily complete the pull-ups, the, the clapping pull-ups, because your, your, your arms are so sweaty. And... Um, when you come down on that bar, your, your fingers slip, and you don't want that to happen as well. So uh, just take your time with it. It's a progression movement, just like pull-ups in and of itself. So uh, really take your time with it. Okay, so for those of you that are still not at that even pull-up uh, body, body weight, you, get, you still can't lift up your own body, uh, use a chair. Uh, use a, a, pull, a lap pull-down machine. That's great. Uh, you could use, um, I have an assisted machine pull-up. Uh, contraption in my gym. The last three gyms that I've ever been to in my life also have had this machine, so I've had luck having that uh, as a piece of equipment to use for myself. But um, it's basically a pad that goes under your kneecaps that allows you to put, that allows you to, takes away weight from your body. It basically puts more weight on that pad and essentially lifts you up. So it kind of makes it easier for you to come up. So, uh, but if you guys don't have that, use a chair, put your, uh, your one foot on it or two feet on it, start with two feet, then go to one. Then, you know, just have it in front of you, knock out 10, and on those last three or four reps, you know, put your toes on it and kind of lift yourself up, kind of give you guys like a little spotting, you know, like a little, uh, little push at the end to try to get yourself to that rep range that you want to be hitting. But... When you're first starting out with pull-ups, it is so it, it is completely fine to be hitting those 15 to 20 reps uh, range uh, consistently. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, keep going after it and uh, work your way up with dips, it, with weighted uh, belts and stuff like that. And it's really it's a really big benefit. Um, I'm gonna get into it a little bit later in this video. That pull-ups is just the ultimate back uh, back rowing uh, move. So it's really helped me along the way. I, I really owe 90% of my back growth to pull-ups, and I'll get into that in a second. Okay, switch grips. You guys see me doing switch grips. Basically, uh, it's an overhand or underhand first. Uh, overhand, you shoot yourself up, and then you switch in midair after one rep, and you come back down underhand, and then you keep going on and on. Okay, so if you cannot, be, uh, if you cannot do that, a uh, great modification you could do, what I was doing in the beginning, is the way you could start it off is Go underhand or overhand, doesn't really matter. Go one, two, come down to the floor as quickly as you can, feet on the ground, uh, and then rise back up and, and go overhand, one, two, then come back to the floor, and then so on and so forth. Uh, uh, once you get to that higher rep ranges uh, and you feel comfortable that you could do two reps on each side, do three, three, come to the ground, three, 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 and keep going. And uh, once you get to four, you could be able to do four on each side. Give it a shot, you know, and you could also put them together. You don't necessarily have to do, if you're doing um, in mid-air, you don't have to com con consistently do that. I, I catch myself doing maybe maybe only 12 or 14 in the air, and then I come to the floor and, you know, regather myself, take a deep breath, come to the floor and switch my, switch my grips and then go from the floor up. So uh, you don't necessarily have to be in mid-air the whole time to actually obtain that stress on your body. You know, coming down to the floor, regathering yourself, and uh, hitting it, you know, going back up with it is, is more than enough. More than enough for me, I would say. So, okay, so what else did I do that I had a lot of questions on? I had a lot of questions on the switch on the switches or the side to side, whatever you want to call it. There's a million names for them. Uh, essentially, um, it's basically a pull up. I come up and I go from side to side. Now, let me explain to you what that hits on your, on your body. Um, it's kind of like 
uh, picture it like a shoulder, like you're doing uh, upright rows. And the closer your, your hands are together, the more the inside of the shoulder you're hitting towards the traps. The outside you're going is the outer part of the shoulder, the more the cap that you get on your shoulder. Same thing with the pull-ups. Basically wide, you're coming up, it's hitting that it, kind of like outer but inner part of your lats in your, in your the back of your shoulders and back. And once you come up and you go from side to side, you're basically engaging your, your outer back and your outer shoulder to really get that cobra style back. So that's the reason, that's the, that's the reason why I do that move. And it really, it burns like a son of a bitch when you do it. When you get to that 12 to 15, you really feel that burn going. But um, it's a great move. Okay, so let me tell you how you could modify that for yourself. Uh, you see me that my chin is over the bar, which is optimal to, uh, to do those side to side. But if you feel like you could come up and only do three and then you're catching your body falling, that's completely fine. On your way down, try to get three or four more reps. So you're basically up. This is where the bar is. So you're up, one, two, three, and then you, and then you start to see yourself fall down because you're losing strength. Fall down. As you fall down, try to keep it controlled as you come down, like a five-second count. So as you come down, you are still going. Even though your tippy toes or toes are still almost hitting the ground, you are still moving along. Drop to the floor, regather yourself, jump right back up. So basically this is how it looks. You come up one, two, three, four, fall to the ground, come back up one, two, three, four, and just keep going up and down. Uh, Pull-ups, you can always take breaks. It's just like abs. You're trying to hit a certain rep range and uh, once you hit it and you have nothing left and you still feel like you want to get four or six more reps because that's your uh, goal, uh, come to the floor, regather yourself, and then shoot right back up. There's no problem with that at all. You're still going to get that same amount of growth and uh, stress level on your on your back.